Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, September 20th, 2012. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. Well, this week, Andy Sparks and I get a peek into the beginnings of American craft beer as we brew up a pale ale inspired by New Albion Ale under the guidance of New Albion founder Jack McAuliffe. If you're new to home brewing and would like to get into the hobby for the first time, check out our website, basicbrewing.com, where you can find archives of our audio and video podcasts and our DVDs to walk you through basic and more advanced brewing techniques. You can follow me on Twitter. My username is Basic Brewing, all one word. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash basicbrewing.james. We have a Basic Brewing Radio and Basic Brewing Video page on Facebook at facebook.com slash basicbrewing. Thanks again to everybody clicking on the Amazon.com associate link on our basicbrewing.com site. Here's how this works. If you want to buy something on Amazon, go to basicbrewing.com first. And click on our ad, our little banner there, Amazon.com ad, and then that will take you to Amazon. And whatever you buy within that session, we'll get credit for and we'll get a little chunk of that. So it won't cost you any extra. That's the beauty of it. Uh, you'll be helping us to bring you the show, and we greatly appreciate your support. We also have associate links that work the same way for Brew Your Own Magazine and the American Home Brewers Association on our site, too. You can find our Basic Brewing iPhone and Android podcast apps out there. Uh, we're on the BlackBerry podcast directory, and we're on the Stitcher app as well. The deadline for the Brew Your Own Magazine Basic Brewing Radio Collaborative Experiment on Wort Chilling Techniques is sneaking up on us. October 8th is the deadline to submit your data. The data form is online now at basicbrewing.com slash experiment. Haven't heard from anybody yet, so uh, if you have sent in your data, drop me a line and let me know. My uh, experiment is in the bottle. Haven't tasted it yet. Looking forward to doing that and seeing what's what. Let's get right to the main stuff, shall we? Uh, in 1976, a little brewery was founded near Sonoma, California, that changed the course of American brewing. New Albion was tiny in comparison to the breweries. Uh, that survived Prohibition, and it only lasted a half a dozen years. However, its founder, Jack McAuliffe, set the spark to the flame that would become the craft beer movement in this country, and we're enjoying the legacy of that today. A while back, we learned that Jack had moved into northwest Arkansas, our neck of the woods, and in May, I interviewed him about his brewery and craft beer. At that time, he let me in on a little secret. Uh, he, the Boston Beer Company uh, makers of Sam Adams, they're reviving New Albion Ale and will release a batch of it nationwide at the beginning of next year. Well, since then, the word has spread on the Internet of the New Albion revival, and uh, Jack is to appear with Jim Cook at the uh, Great American Beer Festival at uh, a few events to feature the beer and talk about the beer's release. Well, since Jack is our neighbor, we asked him if he'd like to brew up a batch of ale based on his original recipe and to talk about what it was like to carve a niche into the face of American brewing. Standing on the, uh, standing on the driveway here with uh, Andy Sparks. Oh, it's always great to be here. And uh, we are honored to be joined by a brewing legend, hmm. Jack McAuliffe. Hi there. I don't know how much of a legend I am. <laughs> You're a legend in your own mind, right? <laughs> yeah, my mind too. <laughs> no, you. I mean, you are. As we we talked to you on a previous podcast, uh, you are the. Would we say the first American craft brewer? Um, I I guess so. Um, that's what people have called me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your brewery, New Albion Brewing Company. Uh, back in the 70s, late 70s, mm -hmm. early 80s, uh, was credited to starting the ball rolling on the whole American craft beer scene. And, uh, you know, now we've got, what, 2,000 breweries yes, in the country? just about. Uh, as opposed to how many were in the country when you started? 16, 17, 18, something like that, you know, actual brewing companies. Uh -huh. So cheers to you, Jack. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I am. Mm. And what we're doing today is we're brewing up uh, your a, a recipe close to your pale ale, right? Uh -huh. 
Huh? And uh, the reason that we're doing that is we're celebrating the release, uh, the uh, sort of resurrection of New Albion uh, in a special beer that's coming out after, what, the beginning of, of next year? Yes, uh, it's supposed to be released in January, I think it is. It's a re- recreation of the uh, New Albion Ale using <clears throat> same ingredients, hops, and uh, th- the yeast that so, we used. So tell us the story behind that. Uh, in the story of, of, the, of... the new beer that's coming out. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Jim Cook, uh, who's the president of the Boston Beer Company at the Great American Beer Festival uh, last year uh, approached me and said he wanted to, you know, if he could be, uh, re- recreate the beer. And uh, he had, um, uh, I guess, uh, trademarked uh, the name of New Albion Brewing Company and New Albion Ale because it was out in the, uh, the free market, mm-hmm. the public domain. So he he did that, and I said, sure, we'll, you know, bring it back like the phoenix. <laughs> and so it's brewed, right? I mean, you went up there yeah. and brewed it. Yes, we. Uh, I went back the 3rd of July, and we ran uh, an experimental batch at the Experimental Brewery in, in uh, Boston. And just last week I got... Uh, a sample of uh, six bottles of it, and it's it's mi- fine, mighty fine. <laughs> <laughs> Does it taste like the old stuff? Oh yeah, uh, it's not bottle conditioned, so uh, it doesn't have that uh, autolyzed yeast flavor. But uh, all of the uh, you know the flavor profile of New Albion is is right there. No two ways about that. So you've got to be excited that this is. I mean, this is going to be a national release. That is correct. In the packaging, the original packaging, the original label, everything, right? Not, not quite, but uh, it'll have the you know the original um, uh, Sir Francis Drake's uh, ship on it, uh, the Golden Hind, and that sort of thing with a uh, the Golden Gate of the San Francisco Golden Gate behind it, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, but it has to have, you know, the modern government warnings and oh, all that yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, stuff yeah. in, which we didn't have to do it in back in 1976. Right, right. How big of a run are they making? Um, that I don't actually know. I guess it sort of depends upon demand and, you know, what the uh, marketplace will absorb, that sort of thing, the usual considerations. Yeah, yeah. And this is a one-time deal? Yes, uh, that's what I'm told, yes. Huh? Yeah, so we're, we're we're trying to get the word out, yeah. to tell people to look for it because uh, once it's gone, it's, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, get it. It's like that uh, the beer we made with uh, with the uh, Sierra Nevada Brewing Company with uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and that's um, a yeah. beer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, uh, Ken Grossman, you know, it, it disappeared. It's it's sort of like uh, the tickets to the Great American Beer Festival. Yeah. You know, they, they were gone in forty five minutes. Bang! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Well, we uh, Andy and I uh, and uh, Steve Wilkes and Zotto Connor were at a bar on the summer solstice, uh, and we just happened to look at the beer list, and there was Jack and Ken's ale right there on the beer list. So we got a bottle and we toasted you on the solstice. That's and that good. and that was the recipe. That was uh, old toe sucker, wasn't it? Well, pretty close approximation to it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that was a. So your your <laughs> your ears should have been burning at that time. <laughs> and yeah, you never know uh, in the bar near you if they have this kind of those rare bottle collections. Seek this one out. This is a good one. Uh, mm-hmm. So what we're we're doing today is is not old toe sucker. This no, is no, no. this is the it was this your flagship beer? Yes, uh, you know the the pale ale as, as it is, you know, a little hoppy, you know. And what inspired this beer? Uh just um a regular simple style of uh, of ale. Uh classic ale. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And this is beer that you, or similar to beers that you had had in Great Britain when you were in the Navy? Well, uh, not quite, uh, but I was exposed to, you know, uh, much more than, uh, you know, the beers that you could obtain in, in the United States at that time. 
So what do we, we're talking about a really complex grain bill here, mm. really <laughs> complex recipe. <laughs> <laughs> when, when we talked about getting this recipe together, I got my notebook out and, you know, I was ready to take a bunch of notes on, on all the grains that I was going to have to, uh, to, to gather. And, and uh, you said, what's the grain bill? Uh, the grain bill is uh, two-row malt. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Pale malt. <laughs> so no crystal? No. No, nothing else? No, we use crystal like in our porter. And of course, we use black malt, uh, patent malt in the stout that we made. But the ale is just, you know, just a, a straightforward uh, one type of hops, one type of malt, uh, one type of yeast, and real straightforward. And uh, it, it, nowadays they call it a smash, single malt and single hop. Okay. Smash. Yes. Uh, and the the hops are Cascades. That's correct. And what what. Uh, the gravity that we're shooting for is 1055. 1055 is a starting gravity. And when so, we pitch. and so we've got we're doing a five. And we might want to check the temperature of that sparge water there, Andy. I'll, I'll put Andy to work while Absolutely. we continue to talk. But um, uh, we're shooting for a starting gravity of 1055. We got a five gallon batch. So what we've done is we are doing uh, 11 pounds of two row. And we are mashing at 148 degrees uh -huh, Fahrenheit, that's and that's that's the temperature that you mashed at. As I recall, yeah. That, yeah. And and why that temperature? Uh, well, uh, it's got plenty of, of body to it and that sort of thing. And at lower temperatures, you'll get more fermentable sugars. And uh, using all malt, there's going to be plenty of body, I can tell you, mm -hmm. at a uh, lower uh, mashing temperature. Yeah, Andy, you and I, I mean, at least in the beginning when we were doing all grain, we tend to go a little bit higher. Right. You know, when you first start learning about home brewing and you look <laughs> at the scale and you and you, you start to understand that, oh, if I, you know, mash at a higher temperature, I'm going to get more fermentables, lower temperature, I'm going to get higher, more alcoholic beer. You start to play with it and you start to think, oh, I, what I want is this rich, malty beer, and you start to think oh we'll all mash at higher temperatures and get rich a real rich flavorful beer and then later you discover that a much more balanced beer is what you desire in your glass really in the long run um i find it cloying at a higher mass exactly. temperature you know and i think that's one of the things as we as as new home brewers you want to reach for the edges of the envelope and of course and then of course then you learn to dial it all back and one of the things that I've kind of been thinking about is that this is really an ideal first kind of beer for a new home brewer, yes. right? It's yes, very it is. simple. Yes, you know? it is. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody wants to make it so complex. Everybody wants to put their stamp on it, so they mm -hmm. want to make it complex. It's probably the wrong you, way to go when you you're need, starting out. You need to start with the foundation, and then you can go from there. But don't start off with, uh, you know, real fancy. No. <laughs> A lot of recipes that I see uh, online, you can tell, first of all, you can tell a lot of them have been designed with brewing software because it's, you know, the, the measurements are so precise. precise and incremental. It's just like, how did you come up with that, you know, that amount of uh, hops or, or the grain to The algorithm did it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, like, you know, it says, it, it says I, I should hit this, this color and this gravity, and so I tweak this and that and the other. Uh, but you really don't have to have mulligan stew you know you don't have to have everything uh in the the brew shop in your ale to make it interesting not when you're starting and probably not when you're ending either <laughs> now yeah that's mine <laughs> I, I had to rest his, his no that no here. you yeah yeah his exactly yeah he won't drink yeah. much <laughs> Uh, so we haven't we haven't figured out the hopping schedule yet but oh. we know we're just going to use cascades yes and what what was your hopping schedule like? Probably about 28 to 32 BTU. Or you, 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 BTUs, not IBUs? Oh, IBUs, excuse me. <laughs> You're an engineer. You're yeah. going back and forth. British thermal units. <laughs> yeah. How hot a beer do we want? You haven't Highly brewed. Highly energetic. <laughs> it's so. been too long since it's brewed. So, what, 30, 35, is that what you said? 28 IBUs? to 32, somewhere oh, okay. in that range. So, and you said that there are three editions, one at 60, one at... Well, it, one, when, it, at, at, when it reaches full boil, mm -hmm. then a half hour into the boil, and then about 15 minutes before uh, we knock it out to the uh, Hutwert receiver. 
And then what proportions? Third, a third, a third. Oh, okay. All right. Like, keep it simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you go. Uh, so we're going to have to figure out the numbers on that to make that, that work. We've got, you know, hop yeah. pellets that yeah. I can uh, I can get. We can get, you know, our little brewing software out and figure out which. And it's got a stamped IBU know. on it. On the, mm-hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. We paused and we took a little refill break. Huh? Uh, Jack, you've got the Avery IPA there. I do indeed. You like that, Ari? Uh, yes, I, I like you know hop forward type beer. So, uh, yeah, you betcha. And Andy, Andy, you've got my little uh, my little rye wit, I call it, with yeah. the uh, mosaic uh, dry hopping. Yeah, and in, I'm really impressed with this beer. This is uh, this is a quaffable quaffable beer, and uh, I'm I've already drank about half of it. It's uh, <laughs> like about what do you say, two and a half percent? Two, no, just two point one. Two point yeah. one. Wow. Um, but the mosaic hop is just popping in this beer. You know, if you want to make a beer that shows off the hops, back off on the rest of the ingredients. <laughs> and uh, this is really really impressive. I'm uh, really enjoying this. Well, thank you. I, uh, uh, you'll have to look at the, the podcast episode, the video podcast episode to figure out how to, how to brew it. We'll show you, we showed you how to do it. So Jack, talk about the brew day at New Albion. When did you start and okay. what was your process? Uh, we start about six o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> get the hot liquor back up to temperature, run, uh, the base, uh, liquor into the mash tun, uh, by that time, I'd have the, the malt all ground up and bring it over as about, uh, you know, a regular trash can full of uh, malt that's a container. And we'd mash in probably about 7 o'clock or so and uh, at about 148 degrees, somewhere close to there. And uh, we'd mash for an hour and then uh, start running uh, to the kettle. It would take, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half to, you know, slowly uh, run the mash tun. And, of course, we'd get the kettle fired up before it was full. And then we boil for an hour. And the hops additions were uh, a third, a third, a third. The first third is when the kettle got to a boil. Then a half hour into the boil. And then the last uh, addition was about 15 minutes before we'd strike the kettle. To the hot work receiver. So how big of a batch are we talking about here? Uh, it was a barrel and a half, about 45 gallons, because I fabricated all of this, uh, the brewing vessels from 55-gallon stainless steel drums that uh, they were Pepsi-Cola uh, syrup mm. uh, distribution drums. That's before they started doing it in bulk on big tanker trucks. And when they did that, they liquidated all these stainless steel drums. And I, I, I must say we had uh, five primaries, ten secondaries, fermenters, and then one, two, three, four, five uh, brewing vessels in the, the brew house all fabricated out of this stuff. Mm. So a barrel and a half, you had to be brewing a lot. Uh, five days a week. Yeah, when uh, I told Jim Cook how big the brewery was, he's, he says, no wonder you went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> there are economies of scale uh, yeah. in this business. Uh, but that's what I had access to. Yeah. And and uh, I, I could fabricate stuff and that sort of thing, but, you know, that's what I could do. So barrel and a half, I mean, what's your capacity, Andy? Um. Well, in my house, I'm probably at... A- Almost a barrel, so mm. not quite that much. Okay. But you know, you're talking. I know that there are, that there are home brewers out there with you know with the capacity of your of your brewery. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, what? To, so the 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 the, on the pilot. How big is the pilot system up at uh, at Sam Adams, Boston? Uh, it's a ten barrel brewery. So, so, so their pilot system is several times larger than than your whole brewery was back yes, then. Yes, it's an order of magnitude larger, as we say. So that's Crazy. it's just amazing. Uh, you know, you did you you planted a seed, and and you know back back then, 
uh, it was seed sized. I mean, well, here's 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 how here's how it went. There were the the big uh, breweries like uh, Anheuser Busch, Miller, uh, those sorts of breweries for a, for a model, and and of course then there was uh, the Anchor Brewing Company in San Francisco that had been uh, solely purchased uh, by Fritz Maytag, and that was a uh, the Anchor Brewing Company. I think it was started in 19, 18, 18 96 or so, but that was an ongoing brewery that, that Fritz, you know, brought up to modern brewing standards. Uh, but the New Albany Brewing Company was the only one, I believe, that had been started since Prohibition. And what people said when they saw what I was doing, hey, if this goofy McAuliffe can do it, <laughs> and I have the same skill set that he has, I can do it too. In other words, it was the point that people realized you know I don't have to have a brewing history like Anheuser-Busch or that's or uh, you know I can actually build a brewery with you know a fairly modest amount of money if I know how to do it and that sort of thing and so that's what happened mm -hmm. And I, I think it was in uh, Maureen Ogle's book where uh, she was talking about there were people that were learning, they were going through brewing programs and learning to be brewers, but they were learning to be more button pushers than, yeah. than hands-on brewers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. You know, uh, what he, what, uh, the, brew, the brewers were uh, being prepared for working in the, large corporate breweries mm -hmm. you know that well that was the only place they could find work right right uh um but now of course you know their brewing program has changed quite a bit you know it's they're producing you know uh professional uh brewers that work all throughout the industry now mm -hmm. so how did you package uh it was originally sold in uh, 12 ounce, uh, you know, standard bar bottles, the tall ones, and uh, I made the wooden cases because, you know, it, being the first one, you know, you couldn't buy, you know, you had to buy, you know, like a train car load of <laughs> <laughs> packaging, so I had to uh, get it here and there, so that's what I did. For instance, I bought... Uh, the returnable bar bottles from a distributor. He was eager to sell them to me because I would pay him cash money. What the, the big brewers did is they they were required to pay. The distributors had to pay the return freight to the brewery. Wow. So wow. he was very, very glad that I showed up and paid him <laughs> something for the glass. <laughs> and did you bottle by hand or out of that work? Oh, yeah. Uh, we use a, a three-spot siphon filler uh, like a lot of winemakers use. Uh and um yeah captain by hand just like your little gizmo <laughs> yeah you betcha <laughs> and they were all like naturally carbonated just like homebrewers do yeah, today right exactly exactly well that's the 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 carbonation or the, the conditioning process that was simple and available to us you know didn't have uh compressed carbon dioxide and uh, and uh carbonation stones and that sort of thing so you were making real ale, what they what they yes. refer to as real ale now, it, like in Great Britain. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Huh. Well, here we are. We're in the mash, and uh, we got about what fifteen minutes left. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to do uh, since it's since it's my system, uh, we're going to do a batch sparge. Uh, although uh, you brought a really cool uh, mash done that we may have to take a picture of. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll go through the mashing process, we'll, or we'll go through the um, collecting of the wort, and then we'll figure out what the hopping schedule is going to be, and then we'll come back and talk about that. Okay. Sounds good to me. So we figured out the hopping, and much to Andy's dismay, we <laughs> we went with uh, 0.7 ounces at 60, 0.7 ounces at 30, and 0.7 ounces at 15. And I think we're hitting the top of your desired IBU range, according to the Daniels, uh, calculator. Okay, that sounds good to me. But you know, and Andy, and it's not enough in your eyes, Andy, 
Well, you know, I like hoppy beers, right? You know, I've become accustomed to the the way, you know, hoppy pale ales taste today, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it seems like not enough hops, but uh, I look forward to trying it. It should be close to the original, and that's what we're trying to do today. And we can adjust it as uh, as Andy wishes mm -hmm. in the future, you know? Yeah. Uh, so we, we collected our wort, and we're pretty much right on target as far as yeah. the gravity goes. That. We and got a boil going here. Yeah, we got the boil going, and we've added the first hop addition. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was your first experience with batch barging, and you were kind of yes, yes, shocked. Yes. <laughs> you oh, looked at, after we collected the first runnings. You looked in there, and you said, "Ah, oh, that's what we tried to avoid." And yeah, they collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> but all, it, the, it, all, the, all the malt has collapsed, and it all cracked ball. <laughs> but it all worked out. So you were t you were talking about. Uh, because you were such a small operation, you couldn't buy your hops by the train, you know, the train car load like every other brewer. Yeah. So tell us the story of how you got your hops. Well, uh, this is just about the time that uh, this new hop variety called Cascades was being introduced. And so, uh, you know, I called the hop dealers around like Hopstein and, and uh, I've forgotten all the others up there like in Yakima, the brokers. And I got a hold of this one guy that said, yeah, uh, we got some cascades that we can sell you. And, you know, hops comes in 200-pound bales. And Lord knows that, you know, 200 pounds of, of hops would last me when we were starting from, from here to eternity. Mm -hmm. But he said he'd sell me a bale. Uh, so I bought one, cascades. And that's how uh, cascades came to be used in New Albion, the only hop we ever used, because it's the only one they they let us buy. <laughs> <laughs> and and the big brewers didn't didn't want it because they didn't know anything about it. Well, they, they were probably introducing it slowly because, like, a large brewer would use two or three years worth of buying that they bought. They'd keep two or three years behind them, and they'd buy maybe 10 or 12 varieties so as they used them up, the beer would ta taste the same. It was a, you know, uh, you understand what I'm saying. It was a, a blend of this, that, and the other. Anyway, but New Albion had this uh, very uh, particular taste of, of this new hops called Cascades. It was very floral and uh, like grapefruity and peachy in, in its aroma, and, that, and, it, and it bittered well at the same time. And... Uh, so about a year goes by, and we use maybe a third of this 200-pound bale of hops. <laughs> and, but we'd order another one from him, and he, sure enough, this guy was kind enough to send another one along. I think the, the price was about a dollar and a half a pound, maybe $2 a pound in those days. And so we just take the old bale uh, down to the, the dump and throw it in, and start working on the new one. <laughs> and it smelled so good, so fresh, you know. How you grab it and you rub it between your hands mm -hmm. and sniff it real good. <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> so that that's how it, uh, it that's that's the hop story. <laughs> so that so that's how the the American Pale Ale that that nice citrusy, uh, floral hoppy uh, style came about. I reckon I. I I can't think of any other way. Can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so the, you, you you have the first hand experience. That's well, that's cool. That that uh, you know these. It's just the, happenstance. How things yeah, happen yeah. as we went along. Well, and, and I imagine that's how a lot of these beer styles, regional beer styles, are, are, arise because that's what they've got the ingredients on hand. And, you know, laws can uh, create beer styles yeah. when you say you can only have a mash done of this size or we'll tax you more or whatever. Well, that sounds like Great Britain, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, ba you know, basically you uh, dance with the girl you brung. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. What do you think, Andy? More hops. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to stick to it. 0. 0.7, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.7. Oh, and it then. smells good. The brew pot is over there going. We put the first edition in, and it just smells intoxicating. It's the thing that you love about brewing. Yep. Yep. And we had our hot scotchies after the after we collected our first runnings, and 
That was that pretty was a tasty. tradition I, I'd never heard of before, but I'm, I'm very glad to be introduced to it, I can tell you that. Well, we're glad to teach you something, Jack. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, well, we will continue the boil. Okay, we have chilled, and we have whirlpooled, and we're waiting for the wort to settle out. And uh, we, with the troube, the excuse me, yes, you're right, Jack. <laughs> Jack says the troube. And uh, joining us, kind of like Bob Har uh, Bob Hope when he used to to come on the uh, the old talk shows, is Steve Wilkes. Yeah, well, I was hanging out with Phyllis Diller the other day. <laughs> she she said her food was so bad that her kids thought Thanksgiving was a tribute to Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. I tell you. <laughs> and there's there's uh, what's her name? The other uh, humoratus. What what is Joan her? Rivers? Joan Rivers. She said, you know. My mother kept trying to get me aborted until I was nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> you got any of those, Andy? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the other day my girlfriend said, come on over, nobody's home. I went over, nobody was home. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just so. Oh, <laughs> All right. But I digress. You, you can tell it's the end of the brew day. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so we have uh, we we've chilled and we've uh, whirlpooled and we're waiting for the the troube to settle oh. out of the wort, and then we're going to rack into the fermenter and we're going to pitch uh, White Labs WLP 013, which I believe is the London ale yeast, yeah, yeah. and you used an English yeast Same sort of thing. in the day. Yes, sir. Uh, so we will continue to. Uh, follow the uh, the example of your your ale and 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 here, you know we'll be able to uh, after the first of the year we'll be able to see if it's true to the example that Boston Beer Company's brought. We can uh, compare and contrast. Be a good uh, excuse to get back together, here. huh? We're all English majors here, so we know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think, Andy? A fairly straightforward, nice, uh, simple beautiful brew day yeah really really very simple um you know a real simple grain bill the process was very smooth uh three simple hop additions uh couldn't ask for much better it smelled wonderful we did the little hot scotchy earlier and the and the first runnings were just delicious it's uh it's kind of interesting you know how uh how really great just plain malt is just by itself yeah so what do you think steve uh, well, I'm anxious to try the beer, and I agree with Andy that single grain malt bills are really um, pretty cool. You know, we kind of get caught up in making beers with a quarter ounce of this and four ounces of that, and a 3.73 ounces of this. And who the hell can tell all that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Just put some two row or some Maris Otter in the mash tun and let it go. There you go. You got it exactly, man. So, final words, Jack. The simpler, the better when you're starting out. And even when you're going forward. So we're, we're looking forward uh, to seeing how the beer turns out. And uh, we will see you in Denver for the Great American Beer Festival. There's all kinds of stuff centered around you up there. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, uh, the Boston Beer Company is going to announce its release and all that sort of stuff. And, <clears throat> you know, the, <clears throat> the geniuses in the marketing department are going to... Uh, have uh, all go at it and that sort of thing, you know. Well, we will do our our part. We're not geniuses, but we <laughs> well, we can tell people what's That's good. Why you're not in the marketing department. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell people what's good, and uh, if you see, uh, look around the first of the year. We'll and we'll remind you. We'll you know. Oh yeah, it'll be up for sale up there in the uh, up in the prairie. You know, north of or to the west of here. This is before you get out of town. Up at the uh, uh, where the the liquor traffic store up yonder, you know, the beer store. The beer store. Yeah, yeah. If you're between Prairie Grove and Lincoln, Arkansas, be sure to yeah. stop by. <laughs> you know, <park> <laughs> but it's but it's gonna be it's gonna be for sale all over the country. So yeah. uh, uh, we'll be sure to to look for it. But uh, man, it's been a fun day. It's been just a fun, relaxing day, just chilling by the brew pot and uh, with a. I called you a legend earlier. But you're you, if you, you weren't comfortable, you didn't seem comfortable with that. But you're you are a pioneer, are you not? Well, that's what they say. But you know, uh, 
I, I, I never wanted to play this role, you know. I sort of eschew this. I sort of have to do it, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I, I ought to be left out in the back of the brewery with a three-quarter inch re uh, wrench in my back pocket and a red rag and uh, doing that sort of stuff, not uh, being up front in the office and pretending I'm one of the geniuses in the marketing department, which <laughs> I guarantee you I'm not. Well, we appreciate your spending time in the back of our little brewery here today, so to speak. So cheers to you, Jack. Thank cheers you. to you, Andy and, and Steve. Cheers to you as well. Cheers. Lahayam. Well, many thanks to Jack for spending time with us. Jack is really a behind-the-scenes kind of guy and is really not comfortable with being in the spotlight at all. And uh, I greatly appreciate his trust in uh, letting us help share his story. And uh, I definitely look forward to spending more time with Jack without any cameras or microphones anywhere around. And <laughs> also thanks to Andy Sparks of thehomebrewery.com uh, the uh, for helping to brew up the batch of ale. Can't wait to taste it. And of course, I'm glad Steve Wilkes was able to join us at the tail end of the festivities. Jack's sister Kathy, her husband John, and their son Dakota joined us for burgers and beers on the patio after the brew day was over. We had a great time, great conversation. And, uh, you know, beer people are good people. That's just what we found. If you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Be sure to check out our DVDs, Extract Brewing and Partial Mashing, Stepping into All Grain, Low-Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and Introduction to Wine Kits. You can find them all on our website. We've got combo deals to save you a few bucks if you want to buy more than one DVD at a time. And you can check out our Basic Brewing shirts in the store, too. You can see a listing of the fine folks across the country who sell our DVDs on basicbrewing.com. And if there isn't a vendor in your area, you can order them online in our online shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody who's continued to click on our Amazon.com link. We appreciate the support there. Our featured products this week that were purchased through the link are the Princess Bride Dread Pirate Edition. On, uh, I'm recording this on Talk Like a Pirate Day, apparently. Arr, and, uh, <laughs> and Amco Swing Away Easy Release Grease Separator. Thanks again, everybody. Remember, I can't tell who bought what, so no worries there. Just click on the Amazon.com lo uh, logo on our site the next time you feel like Amazon shopping. We greatly appreciate your support. Don't forget, you can also join the American Homebrewers Association or subscribe to Brew Your Own Magazine through the associate link on basicbrewing.com. That's all until next week. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer, production help for Basic Brewing Radio, and our website is provided by our buddy Kelly Dotson. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. So long.